welcome to Bloom in Full Color, where we live life in high definition. And <laughs> I'm Jennifer Moss. I've got Adam Thompson and BJ McGuire with me. Today, we're going to tackle perennials because it seems to be very front of mind. Um, we seem to be experiencing a slightly early spring. We'll go into that in a, a second um, or a following episode. Um, but I think we need to celebrate one thing I haven't told you guys. This is our 50th podcast. <laughs> Is it really? We have pooped out forty nine wow. of these things. It's a lot of garbage. Did you you did a bunch? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How dare you speak truth, Adam? Sorry, everyone. <laughs> How dare you speak How truth? Dare you? How dare you? <laughs> this is entertainment. That's why it's, it's entertainment spliced in with a slight bit of education. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Is how so, education is supposed to work. Well, it's a hell of a lot more entertaining if uh, it's entertaining. I mean, Agreed. It goes back to our. This can be a video. dry subject. I oh, refer you to like buddy. almost every professor in college. <laughs> well, okay. So I, I why think, it's first of all, okay. I think I think something to take away. Okay. Is that Zach after... is speaking right now, our producer? Yes. Hi. <laughs> after fifty episodes, you still don't fully know your outro. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm still I still don't have that figured out. That's all right. One of these days we'll record it and I don't have to regurgitate it every time. There you I'm go. Grading you on this? What the <laughs> hell? You know, it comes it's down okay. to um a following uh, one that we have coming up for our Mother's Day, one of overstimulation. Yes. So, yeah, that's that's me not being able to get any more into the sponge that is my brain. <laughs> so we're going to squeeze some of that out today and work on perennials. So I think that the one big selling point of perennials is they come back and you don't have to replant them, assuming everything goes right. Granted. So sure. that's that's my one solve for perennials. But I, that, that. even better than that, I feel like most of the perennials we sell need a single pruning. And it's about this time of the year. You just go whack, 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 whack. And they're good to go. I almost, can still do that. Oh, I would do it yeah. right now. It's, it's the time. Because um, I didn't do it in the fall. The, the fall, I definitely don't do it in the fall. Let it go for a while yes. until the degree. Like the temperatures are upwards in the 55, 60 range. Okay. Um, there's no hurry is what I'm saying. Uh, just because a lot of insects use that leaf litter and those stalks as like part of their reproductive cycles. That's what I was saying. I, was, I disagree with you. I am a fall cutback person myself. I will tell you. I didn't you, realize until recently that that was bad. You'll kill lavender oh. and it won't come back if you cut them in the fall. Lavender stores all of its oh, overwinter yeah, yeah, yeah. carbs in the last year's growth. So if you trim lavender, you'll it'll you'll lose okay. half of it in the so winter. So basically, yeah. what we just said is go ahead and trim, but don't trim. So there's certain things there's you can trim. Yeah, there's certain things say. you can. Yes. It's plant world. There's an exception to every single <laughs> okay. rule. So don't trim lavender in the fall. Correct. So does lavender come on new wood or so, uh, old wood? Lavender comes on new wood. So I just trimmed lavender in the last couple of weeks. So I let it get through. And all I'm worried about in the spring, if we're not going to get minus somethings is what I'm looking at, right? Mm -hmm. 30 degrees to me does not hurt perennials at all. So no. I'm pretty comfortable okay. trimming in February. It's like, for instance, I definitely go and get my asparagus in February for the insect issue you're talking about. The insects overwinter in that, in that old brush. So you leave it on for the hard freezing in the hard winter, in my opinion, right? And then I try to get out of it in February. So when it does start warming up, I have no place for the bugs to live when the warm comes is the way I kind of think okay. about it, right? Okay. In my tiny head. And lavender is the one we learned for, for realsies. All the carbs are stored in last year's growth. So if you cut it off, you've literally eliminated all the food it's got for the whole winter. And what I saw doing that is patchy death in my lavender Ew. row. So lavender, you leave it alone until the springtime, which is what I tend to do with most of the perennials that we sell. I'm talking about all the aqualegias sure. and the and the well, reason I say now I'm starting to see green growth. So, so when lazy I, girl gardening, I didn't trim anything in perfect. my front yard. Do it now. No, perfect Ad, time. Adam did it for me the year before that, but I yeah. uh, spaced it. I was like, yeah. When you yeah, see that emergence at the soil level, that, then you can, that's a pretty much your yep. time frame of take the stalks from last yep. year off. Okay. Yep. And you can, it's really nice because you can get in there, you can cut those stalks just above what's green. Mm -hmm. And within two weeks, they grow out above, above what's dead wood. And then, so it looks like a brand new, freshly installed plant. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Cause it, I was looking through my. Bring front. me back to sub shrubs though, okay. after we gab about sub some shrubs? perennials. Yeah. Sure. Lavender is a sub shrub. Um, oh. with like, Russian sage. Um, 
Orovskia. I was thinking of some other things too. Orovskia. You say with your Russian accent. Orovskia. Yeah, I'm not that good. Hey, we've got a mic for you, sir. If you decide to join us, Dave has come into the studio, so you might join us. He, we've been doing a lot of a lot of things today. <laughs> we got a lot of a lot of things going. Yeah. Um, so Happy do plants in, <laughs> in your garden. So I have taken the front flower bed in front of my house. Um, that's just attached to my house. And I put perennial herbs through there. I did not trim anything. My bad. The chives are coming up with a vengeance. And um, what do I do with thyme? Where does it come off on the plant? I I touch it. I I, I only thing I do is is I trim off, off. I trim off dead. You can shape it. Right. And if you get some of those branch diebacks, Mm -hmm. prune those off, but shape. Yep. It doesn't only. really need okay. a haircut. I agree. It's it's almost an evergreen here, actually. Almost. Yeah, um, it doesn't go off. It really okay. you really only don't have I'm leaves on time for like Yeah, I'm just make it look it how you like. Month. I almost ripped yeah. them all out because I was pissed at it. So that was not the solve. Do I was some like, little crescent moon shapes, away, whatever. Walk you away. Just, or get it to yeah. trail like you want it over yeah. your edge or whatever. Yeah, Shaping it just looks like perfect time of year. Right now. The yeah. problem that you have with time is if you don't cut it back, you're gonna have all that wood. Left over from the yeah. last that's season, exactly and that's the at. problem. That so uh, to three, to, you just need three to, to four it. seasons every. You just chop it all the way back. Okay, that's how they keep the time lawns in the fall fresh. when I'm harvesting it and leave good healthy stock, and then okay, time okay. lawns. That's a thing. Oh yeah, where? What is it? I've never even heard you. of this. Uh, a creeping time lawn. You've never seen these? never, oh, I've never seen even heard of it. Oh yeah, I did an install for a client a couple years ago, and uh, that's what they this want. This wow. year too, actually. So I get to Ooh. see. It's, that, I seeded it because I was crazy. When that blooms, but that it, would be so cool. It's gorgeous. But just, as you're yeah. walking, I'm, I'm just, just give you the smell. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But to Dave's point, it gets sticky it, after yes. a couple of years, and yep. so you want to just do a full basil cut. And I would say most perennials, especially larger sizes, need some rejuvenation. That's what we used to call it, rejuvenation pruning, yep. where you go hard and heavy. Now, typically, I don't mess with that in the in the fall or the winter. We typically are doing that in the spring when in it's spring. already kind of in growth um, because you're really opening hardcore wounds. But yeah. mo- I would say most, and I'm, I'm trying to think through, most of our perennials are not big shrubs. I'm talking about boxwoods and privets and large, oh, long-lasting, giant-type shrubs. They need occasional, and you said three to five years is when you got to go in there and kind of trim them back. Pontilla is one around here. You don't trim it because Pontilla sets on last year's wood. So if you go and hatch it in the fall or spring, you get no flowers. But every three or four years, you really got to hack it back to size. You really want to get it back to shape. So weird. What about hydrangeas and peonies? <laughs> the exceptions to the rules. Yes. Are we doing shrubs today? Let's because go to that could be a totally, I could gab about shrubs forever. Okay, but well, I wondered I'm, if we would dip into that. I, you go ahead. Because shrubs are what you're looking at in the uh-huh. landscape right now. So sure. go for it. Well, no, I want I want to skip shrubs. Oh, okay. I wanted to mention hydrangeas. I still want to know about hydrangeas about. and peonies. I got hydrangeas and peonies are worth mentioning. Okay, because okay. they're kind of herbaceous. Mm-hmm. Hydrangeas get woody, but woody. anyway, I've always told my gardeners never touch a hydrangea until I'm with you, because you don't cut them back like perennials. So what are you doing this weekend? Huh? What are you doing this weekend? <laughs> Not working for you. <laughs> okay, good answer. I am going to relax good this weekend. Jennifer, I might be able okay. to take well, a so two-day weekend. You tell me what I need to do. So as far as I know, there are two types of hydrangeas. There are the panicles and then the round leaf varieties. I think they're different species or genus. Anyway, so they get, you have to look this up per okay. your hydrangea. Correct. Some of them grow on new growth and some, some of them grow, grow off old flower. So I need to Excuse grab the me, culture flower book that we have hiding in the production office. You need to look it up. Well, and it's interesting, every one of our sells with a book on it that tells exactly what to do for that variety. Oh, I left yeah. the tag on. So, yeah, there you go. So okay, we'll be I'll able to go. We'll be able to look at it. Assuming that the mice are the So in uh, case, oh, let's talk about old wood, new wood again, because if everybody doesn't understand. Yeah, so, we're yeah. talking jargon. Let's, well, let's and we're in the business, so it's easy for us. So some plants set this year's flowers on last year's wood. There are some varieties of raspberries is the one I'm thinking about That's that people might be familiar, right? Where you don't go trim your raspberries because last year's cane is this year's fruit, right? There are other raspberries that you can mow right to the ground in the fall. Everything sets on new wood. So you, you got to be find out. Potentilla is what I'm talking about. Potentilla is a shrub. And most, most people have them trimmed up to look like a meatball. They have little yellow flowers all summer long but it sets on old wood. So if you trim last year's growth off, you won't get very many flowers. So it's important to figure out each specific variety of stuff if you care about them, right? You don't need to do this for every plant in your yard. The hydrangeas, the really fancy stuff, the specimen plants. And this is woody. 
woody, woody plants. Woody plants, perennials is what we're talking about. Woody perennials, so shrub-like perennials. You really need to figure out if it's old wood or new. Again, raspberries, if you cut your raspberry canes off of a plant that sets fruit from last year's wood, you won't have any fruit. Yeah. So you'll have wasted your time. But there are new modern varieties of raspberries that set on new wood. So you can cut all that stuff away and get rid of it in the fall. So you just have to be careful. That's what, what Adam's yeah. talking about. There are specific rules to each one. What you'll need to learn the ones that you care about. And her hydrangea is very specific because there are three or what four about kinds. Peonies? peonies in my garden de have dead wood. So this time of year, the peonies yeah. are greening up. I literally take a pruner and chop out anything that's woody yeah. and dead. And you can tell this time of year because the green's coming up on the bottom. So anything that's not green and fresh. There. They're more like reds. Come on. Peonies. They're, they're you get green more. ones coming up. Mine are all red. <laughs> Uh, you know what? And I might be mixing them up. Yeah. I have mixed my perennials so many there. Uh, my beds are just a complete hodgepodge, which I love to look. Um, but you're right. I might be looking at another plant that I'm calling a No, the, when they crown, like at the soil or whatever, they're always red. Okay. Are they not? Um, you could, I could well be tripping. Pour, and this I could have been a couple of weeks ago in my garden and they're already starting to green up too. Yeah, they could right? be. Because Mine you're right. Some, some stuff when they crack is or purple. Yeah. I see yeah. a lot of purple buds. This like time costas. Of yes. Purple. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, peonies, uh, I advise leaving them alone uh, in the fall. You can top like where the leaves grow, but leave like some six to 12 inch oh, I stalks them on them. Oh, I ignored them and touch them. That's Just what I so you know where they're at. Yeah. Because some people cut, cut everything down like me, you know, clean the garden up in the, in the fall. fall. Well, peonies really disappear if you do that. And if you step on a, a the emerging plant yeah, i mean you, it's it. just sad. i feel like more things than we think store their carbohydrates for the winter in the old stems and so that's why i feel uh, we know yeah. for a fact lavender is that way it sounds like peonies anything is. woody essentially right so yeah. that's why t i'm a hardcore lazy garden in the fall i could care about the garden <laughs> yeah. i'm ready to be done with it yeah I'm over i it. move right I'm on i'm over it <laughs> springtime i'm a little more rejuvenated so i tend to go out in the spring and do the hardcore to me that's almost a better bet to hedge just because Cleaning up in the spring, I feel like it's not damaging to most things, right? It's already made it through the winter. It's already survived the minus 12s or whatever. So to me, if you want to defer one thing, push it off to the spring. Push you're in a better mood. You're 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 more peppy to go do it that time of year. And I feel like you'll hurt less plants, kind of like what you're sure. saying, in my opinion. It's wet and I don't like it. Yeah. I like the fall dry cutback. Oh, I see what you're saying. And I'm also trying to stretch my season a little bit. Right? I, well, I understand that too. <laughs> right. You're trying to make a living. You're trying to make yeah, money. Yeah, because spring is chaos. I'd rather not do anything in the totally spring understand. if I can help it. So that's where I, it's, it's that balance All of, of us have a different professional opinion on that. <laughs> and, yeah. Depends on what business you're in, right? Honestly. If I were at home, I would absolutely take the lazy approach and do it all in the spring. Yeah. That's but where I'm at. Because yesterday it was beautiful after work and I was like, man, there's no wind. The sun's out. It's a perfect temperature. It was like 40, yeah, right. 50. And I was like, cool, I'm going to tilt around my garden and get a couple things done that I didn't do in the fall. And so, not from a, but can we talk about this for a second? Because around my perennials, I do a crap load of bark. Yeah, Bark is super beneficial to help your soil structure. It's super beneficial to keep your water use down. It helps your plants because it helps regulate the soil temp. Oh, and as a bonus, I can work in my garden no matter how wet it is. And my shoes are clean. I'm not walking in mud because everything around my perennials is all barked up. Yeah. So just a couple of big bonuses. Okay, I can go out in the snow. Bitch. <laughs> hey, it looks good. It smells good, and it's healthy. Like yeah. it's, it's a win-win-win. Did you say weed suppression? All of this. All yeah. I did not. Okay. But you're 100 percent. All the oh, not yeah, not love, only does it help suppress, but I when you get them, they're easy pop out because yeah. the root is four inches below where you're put. Bark is magic, and and I say bark. I have bought it from Kimberly Nurseries. I have. Stop the guys chipping the trees and yeah, just have like, them drop say, it in my you yard. Buddy hookup though. So Mr. Infinite and bark every one here. of these are beneficial. <laughs> every one of these is good. Like I've used every one of them intermixedly. So bark is a beautiful thing in a permanent garden. Obviously, you're not going to do it as a landscaper. He's a substrate specialist. Mm. That's what he likes. It's marvelous. I don't know if you know that. Magical, magical. <laughs> substrate. Mm -hmm. He's a dirty substrate. word. Yeah, substrate specialist. That's a ten dollar word. <laughs> Ooh, chick. I don't know. I think there's some controversy about bark in the flower bed. You know, well, not in your planting beds. Because it will steal nutrients as it's breaking down. So bark is not necessarily for your planting areas. Some people sure. believe it hardcore. I don't. I do my walk pass is what I do. I don't think it's Okay, worthwhile. so clarifying question, difference yes. between bark and mulch. Bark is actually chunks of wood. When you say mulch, I start thinking peat moss or topper or something that is a finer fibrous. And I'm thinking of shredded down fibrous top cover. When I say bark, I'm talking chunks of wood. So when you say shredded bark, to me, that's something you'd use under a kid's playground. That's not necessarily 
there's two things here. The wind here, if you put the wrong material down in Idaho and don't put enough, okay, it bye will bye. blow away. <laughs> okay, you will bye. spend $400 on the most expensive ground cover you've ever had and it'll end up in your neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. So there, to me, there's a couple things. I tend to go with the biggest spark I can get my hands on and then I put it down no no less than four inches deep and you lose people. Their eyes glaze over when you tell them that. But less than four inches deep doesn't give you the shade for the soil so you're not actually getting the weed suppression that you're looking for. Yeah. And... If you don't do it four inches deep, it will not lock. And that's when the wind blows the stuff away. So you have to spend the money. You have to put, and when I say four inches, that's at the end. So you got to start with six inches, let it water and snow a little bit and compact, right? It takes a lot of bark to do it right. I now know what happened to the triangle in front of my hand. Correct. It blew away. I will take you and show you bark that's been in my house for 25 years. I put it down thick enough. It was the big chunky stuff and it's still there 25 years later. So if you spend the money and do it right, it doesn't disappear. What happens is people go spend the $9.99 on the bag of bark. They put it down about a half an inch thick yeah. and either the soil eats it up or they walk it into the ground and or it blows away. And they go, well, what did I spend $150 at Home Depot for? You just misapplied is really what you did. <laughs> and I understand I, I am the guy that bought $400 trucks of bark one after the other. And the wife kept going, are we done yet? I'm like, well, I thought we were done, but I only did this much. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, the answer no. is no. Bark is a beautiful thing. It's You can find it free. So this is not an expense. You just kind of have to go source it a little bit. I literally go find the guys that are trimming the trees for the for the power poles. I go, hey, you guys want someplace to dump? And they're so excited because they don't have to drive 40 miles back into Twin or whatever. They're happy to come and dump it in your yard. And then we just move it around. So, so lots of bark in our house. Make friends with the tree trimmer. Make friends with the tree guys. We're talking perennials. This is super beneficial for perennials. Right, everything we're talking about here will help. It okay. helps the soil. It helps the plants. Helps what everything. is a perennial in Idaho? What zone? What's the zone of a perennial? Oh, okay. So first you off, US, here, don't you? USDA <laughs> and Sunset Magazine screwed this up. We're now, zone five. We're zone five. We're zone five. It doesn't matter what. What does it say? It says six B. They call us a six B. Is now, what USDA said. Which. To be fair, when you look at our record lows in the winter, that's a scale of 10 degrees. They're for every taking zone. an average and making They're taking an, an average from the last 50 years. And we are warming up. Warming up. Yep. I think zone five puts us at negative 20 as our lowest temp because zone seven is ground zero. Right. Zero degrees is mm -hmm. your lowest temp. Six is zone minus nine 10. is frost free. Is that right? It's it's zone very 10. close. Yeah, I think Dave's it's nodding. Yes, no, I think nine. Right. So there's, there's, there's a couple of nods. Or okay. nine's nine. frost free. Okay. Anyway, so it's ten degree increments, and we haven't seen negative twenty in a few years. In a minute, Long we got time. dang close uh, in December. Of Minus this year. two on my car. I didn't even know my car could say that the, when we had that freeze in That's December, true. right? Didn't even know my car could yeah. say that. Yeah, we got pretty cold. But we had a minus five a few years ago. Yeah, yeah we like, have. I've seen negative twenty. It's really eight. spotty. So it's it just a, it's a kind of. But it comes down to people are like, well, it didn't number. come back. And it's like, well, was it a dry winter? Well, and I think this is what, to Jennifer's point. So to hedge your bet, if you're going to spend a lot of money on a plant and it's something you really care about. Yeah, like a 20 go or 30 to dollars. zones lower. So if yeah. we're claiming to be six, find something that's that's good for zone four. You won't have any problems. Little we talk about that. Well, and I'll I'll let you know, Moss Greenhouse is metric. It's not a perennial unless it's a zone fiber lower. There you go. Like we don't even, we don't. Call it a perennial. Now we have several sixes. Right. We do, but we don't call them a we perennial. We sell them as annual. We sell them as an annual. And so those beautiful two gallon digitalis, that's a zone six. So that's an annual. Um, Which means it'll be fine for three years and then it'll yeah, die. Yeah, technically <laughs> rosemary's the same way too. It's a zone oh. six, even though we kind of sold it as a perennial. Rosemary's a ro zone six? I think so. It is. I, have you not seen... Yeah. Just anything rosemary. that I planted in it's mass gorgeous. in Vegas, I'm like, no way it would grow up here. So it just surprises yeah, me when no, you say it's a perennial. I'm like, what? It, it's really spotty. It's spotty. I have and a few friends with the rosemary shrub, right? But I have never gotten one too. I winter. can't get them to winter over. I plant them every year. They probably use bark mulch, PJ. <laughs> it, it helps regulate. It does. <laughs> Damn it. it does. And, and to be fair, what what the reason this is not a hard and fast rule is because you can find a spot at your house that's protected enough. If you live in within town, two zones, with yeah. you could find. A spot in the right spot that might be a seven, and it might be as simple as the furnace is out by that plant yeah, or something. No or, dryer or, vent, or, is or what the I'm dryer learning. vent. Something, something silly. Brandon's or, got a zone seven in his yard. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, and he's you're a just, cheater. 
He's a zone cheater. <laughs> well, it's because you go to some old lady's house. It's got the planet. You're like, I want one of those. Oh, it's not the right zone, but it's there. It's been around for 20 years. It She's was planet. Got a, she yes. has a microclimate. Yes. Yeah. So you can have something in a microclimate that works. So if you find a warm spot in your yard and there is a plant you have your heart set on. Try it. Give it a whirl. Don't buy tons of them. Buy two and <laughs> Try see all if that. It just, works. just keep in mind. Don't waste money. You're banging a square hole peg through a round, a round hole. hole. It might be fine for three, four, or five years, and then we might have that winter that kills it. If the so square is small enough, it goes through the circle. It, you can get it through yes. there. Just might not <laughs> work story. forever. Don't buy 500 squares. <laughs> Please. Don't do good that. advice. Listen to this. Yeah. It, it turns out we might know what we're talking about. <laughs> but so I have a, an agave <laughs> collection, right? And they are all listed as zone seven plus. And I let them freeze down to 23 degrees or something and they like it. Yeah. I get a lot of like flowering in my cactus and agave collection because I give them a hard winter. Sure. But. It's all about protection and what they experience. And even just a frost cloth will will buy them 10 degrees. You know, it's it's kind of incredible. But I'm a zone pusher. I encourage experimentation. Which, again, yeah. is fun. if you're talking if about you're a, a dedicated gardener, yes. the playing around yeah. is fun. Try it. Yeah, it's to be fair. The right plant in the right zone will still die on you. Okay, like there's no there's no hard and fast rule to this. So pushing things is half the fun, in my opinion. This can't grow. Well, give me two of those. I'll show you. Kind of deal. That's kind of me. I had some cannas that perennialized last year. Wow, yellow cannas. What are those? A zone nine to ten. I'm they're looking. annuals. Yeah. yeah there's like, oh, yeah, they're for end. sure. They're, they're marginals. The whites, reds, and yellows are marginal. Those hybrids are not. But anyway, they, I shit you not. And I know because I went through it the next year and she wanted cannas again. So I planted like a rose colored, a, a pink canna. We had one yellow one in the middle. Because they came pink. back. <laughs> yeah, it hey, was like, I'm and here. when I bought the cannas from Moss, they were all in color. So I yeah. knew they were all purple going in or pink, whatever. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we had a freak yellow canna and she was just like, dude, what, what the hell? What like, is this, I, are, is this a joke? And I'm like, that plant can no. single handedly change the look of a garden. I think that oh, yeah. one plant makes it go instantly tropical. Yep. It just has such I, it's I, an annual. It's, it's an annual. It's an annual. <laughs> We're talking about perennials, but that plant is talking amazing. Now it'll change a, yeah, a we landscape. Are zone pushing. And zone um, pushers. So that's where the six and five get a little muddled. Um, there are cannas that I've seen that are listed as like a six A. A is the higher one, right? Yes. Yeah. The warm. Yep. So let's talk about winter kill. And know that winter kill usually comes down to moisture, not temperature. Almost always. And sometimes if it's been a wet winter, it was a wet, cold winter. Which, which helps. Which helps tremendously. But if it rotted out, if you had mice, rodents, moles, uh, voles, moles, voles. A ball moles, of the above. Moles go on the face, voles cre- crep on the ground, or cre- creep on I the ground. We have moles in the ground. Yeah. Too. Yeah, we, we have both. We absolutely losing do. Losing it. It's fine. <laughs> it's Little Tuesday. Critters. We're fine. One on one uh, face. Leave me out of it. <laughs> so uh, those those things can all affect. Mm-hmm. Um, what else does winter kill? Well, again, winter kill is defined as you had a perennial and it doesn't come back. The what, winter killed it. What mostly hurts around here and where people don't think about, it's, it's called desiccation. When we have those dry winters mm-hmm. where the ground is frozen, but the wind is howling, that cold wind will still suck moisture right out of plants. Yeah. And if the ground is frozen, so the plant is not able to uptake any moisture out of its frozen snow roots and frozen ground. is your the best wind, friend, yes. too, because snow is an insulator and it's moisture. Yeah. Winter desiccation is 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 hard to manage. When you, when you got our kind of winters, which is Absolutely. blowy, no rain, no snow. Those are the tough winters. Very hard to do anything. I will tell you blankets, like he talked about, you can use blankets for short periods of time. They will help you say on a hard frost tonight, they are not a long-term oh, answer. Oh yeah, you don't pull that, them out that, I, I, no. I asked one of my favorite tree companies in Vegas, we, we spend tens of thousands of dollars on palm trees in Las Vegas, right? Tens of thousands, a tree, right? And then you go to these fancy places and I've got them wrapped with burlap. And, and I asked my tree, I goes, what's that for? He goes, to make the customer feel better. Wrapping it, does no, it does no, you cannot save a tree by I wrapping it. I thought the burlap was for branch breakage from no, snow load. In the theory in the for that zones, was to, to keep a heart from freezing is in theory is why you wrap them. And okay. the tree guys were like, it's, it's complete just like- bullshit. I learned this about the shampoo industry. There's no need for lather. Hundred percent. It is only to make the consumer feel better. Uh-huh. <laughs> it does feel better. It does. <laughs> and you want? I literally, our hair guy asked me, "Do you want lather in your shampoo?" And I was like, "Duh." But it's like three chemicals but, that are like harmful. 
Well, they're not necessary That's to clean what your I'm, hair. Yes. They're not necessary. I don't know that they're harmful. I just know that they're not necessary. But they don't so, help the soap spread or anything like right. no, that. Right. No, it's no. literally for... It's a human interaction yes. deal. Yes, yeah. it's strictly for humans' <laughs> feelings. <laughs> right. Which has been a very large topic lately. I have seen burlap <laughs> used for like uh, cypress and arborvitas. To that's a shape from- thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's to keep your column no branch yes. break. Yes, yes, yes. Because yeah, they I get know, heavy. Yeah. And that's a shape, not a temperature off. thing. Yeah, yep. And you're right because you get those snows and it'll pull an arborvitae down, and then it looks terrible. I will say though, there was some people in Boise, and if you're listening, let me know who you are. But um, they're on Boise Ave up there, but they've got a southern magnolia, and they it's not burlap. They Ooh. like kind of miniature greenhouse sexy. it around okay. itself. Okay. Um, and they probably mulched the hell out of it. And it is a sickly looking tree. It's a Southern Magnolia at 44 Square degrees north. Square peg in a round <laughs> hole. I've seen them anyway, do it with lighting. Yeah. I've seen like you can wrap yeah, it with lights. Yeah, the Christmas lights. To, they yes, say it buys you a couple it, degrees. A couple degrees, right? And if if you're trying to save something over the winter, all you're trying to do is keep the heart alive. You could lose branches. You could lose stuff, right? You're just trying to keep the growing point. But when you say the heart, you mean the... Oh, and I'm thinking palm, right? So a palm tree, everything, comes, yeah, all the, the growth wood. comes from a heart, okay, gotcha. right? Trees are similar to that in that, you know, you got to protect the trunk, the, the exterior. You could lose a lot of limbs. Tree doesn't die. Sure. When you start freezing, the, the central core of it is what you could have issues. So when I say heart, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Okay, we... Went on so many tangents except perennials. No, no all perennials. Winterization, right? We're still kind of... Yeah, covered it. Dave, do you have any input? No, I was just going to say squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> that's... that's You just interject. You don't have to wait for your turn <laughs> to say that. You just yell squirrel. We, we actually have meeting okay. balloon animals. One of them is a squirrel and we throw it at each other. Yeah. It's a soft... Top thing. five perennials go. Mm. Mm. Aqualegia, amazing. Barely have to touch it. It's marvelous. And, I agree with you on that one. Almost all season. Aqualegia, number one for sure. Gorgeous. Multiple colors. We sell four different colors. Stunning flower. Super nice plant. Almost takes no effort in the garden. No yeah, fertil- okay. no fertilizer. I, Aqualegia is one of my top. I love it after like you cut it back after it flowers and you just get that nice it's another beautiful, flush. Yeah. It's like the first love thing it. up in the garden too. So like before yep. anything else has started, I got Aqualegia popping up. It's a great plant. Right, My number two top. is Echinacea. Echinacea. Oh, okay. Echinacea is beautiful. You know, I'll go ahead because you guys yeah, haven't you're gonna talked yet. Yeah, you're going to go tangent. Um, I would do uh, pineapple sage, which is kind of a zone pushing, zone six. Um, really? But I absolutely what? love pineapple sage. because No flowers I, to speak I, of, though. Yeah, but ornamental poppies and peonies would be my next two. And I am in love with blanket flowers, Gallardia. Okay, yes. I beautiful. love Gallardia. The flowers are yeah. stunning. You definitely have a look, don't you? I Well, <laughs> I'm going all the wrong colors. What about you? Uh, Penstemons. Okay. Oh, salvias too. Penstemon I and salvias. salvias. You know which one I'm creating? Monarda. Yeah. Monarda's Monarda is incredible. Four and a half foot tall. It's incredible. Big, beautiful flowers. Bee balm for those who fabulous. don't know Monarda. Um, okay, Bee balm. Let's, let's Not do only that, names. your Penstemon and your uh, Monarda are hummingbird uh, favorites. Yeah. Yeah. All so, pollinator family. Yep, all yeah. pollinator food. The dwarf varieties of Monarda, though, are choice. No, and I can see because the one They're I beautiful. got, which is Jacob's Climb, which is the mm-hmm. old kind of very tall. It doesn't get lanky really, but I'm you couldn't put it in front of a window. It's it's four and a yeah. half, it's five foot tall. So I could see a, a they, more compact I version. That's, I don't like them because they get legged out. Ugh. But that smell, that smell is my favorite thing next to rosemary. Wow. They battle for my favorite smells, but it's Monarda or Rosemary. So I don't it's like wishy washy colored plants. That's me. So anything that's light colored, I'll stay away from. Strong colors, I'll always lean towards. Yeah, and I always bright, go, I go, yellow. well, I actually like blues and purples more, but I I get more from red flowers because they pop, right? Yeah. So it's a visual thing. I think you need both. Boy, the salvias around her. Last couple of seasons, the salvias have, have been, been fire. stunning. Fire. I mean, blue blooms, 18 inch. Stunning. stunning. It doesn't happen every year, though. No, I feel it like it, it needs that wet winter or it needs a cold winter. I you feel like sure. the mild winters, we don't get the blooms out of them. They're still sure. okay, but they're not. Ooh, Last couple you know years. You know one other perennial that I'm in love with, and we're not, like, I'm going to just squash everybody's dreams, Allium. Yeah. We're not able to grow it here, um, or no. we're not able to bring it in at Ornamental Allium because the Department of Agriculture protects the onion growers. But Ornamental Allium with those big blue pom-poms on the stick. Yeah. Oh, God, those are sexy. They really are. <laughs> we, we, I, if, in case you didn't know, we grow almost... The whole nation's seed for onions comes out of out of, out of Idaho. Yeah, right? out of so, Wendell. <laughs> yeah, it, out of Southern. I was going to yeah. say Southern. I think it is just it, Southern. It's, so it's the Wendell. whole country's onion seed comes from us. So they were very cautious. You yeah. can't bring in potatoes. You can't bring in well, onions. Well, it's onion sets. You can ship seed 
into the state of Idaho. Okay. So there's so it's, not the it's kinda like potatoes. You can't um you can't have a potato start like fingerling it has to come from Idaho with the certified Idaho grower. It has to be protected. But if you had seed like seed. Oh, so see, must not can, be a vector yeah, for all the stuff that's that are not be, Yeah. They, mm. And we know that because we're, we're working hand in hand with Department of Ag all the time. So that's, that's something we're always battling. It's just like the hops and the grape growers. They're protecting an industry. They're protecting big ag. Big ag has a lot more power they, than they, floriculture. They, their lobby is way bigger. Well, there's a lot more money there. Way bigger. Way bigger. Squirrel. 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 <laughs> okay. So homework. Peonies to answer your Try question. Try is yours. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Single Jerks. or double? Uh, doubles. I t- actually, yeah, doubles. The f- the lace leaf mm-hmm. peonies. Have you Those seen these? Those are different. Yeah. They're really short. They yeah. look like they're ferns. different. They're like they're they're bougie. They're bougie. They're bougie. Yeah, but they are a showstopper. They'll stop you in your tracks. I have not seen one bloom. I've seen them like I will play. Show you. Okay, so, I've seen them on the shelf, and I'm like, eh, eh, eh. I've never seen them for sale. I thought they were just like an old world thing that people lost interest in. Um, I, I think I've seen them in. I think cycle, it all, cycle goes, it all comes back. Yeah, yeah. it really does. It yeah. really does. Like the I 90s. mean, like Jinko jeans like, that yeah, are like all and mullets bottoms. have showed up. Can't stop talking about Jinko jeans. Oh God, sorry. I I went shopping with my daughter this weekend, and I learned a lot. And I didn't want to relearn that from the 90s. I was sitting in a dressing room waiting for my daughter to try something on, and Backstreet Boys came on, and I looked up. There was a show, the, a lady from the shop. She goes, I know it's weird, right? <laughs> Straight back to the 90s? Yeah. I was just like, I we're having the whole want experience. It <laughs> then. Oh, my God. God. It oh my God. It's time to, it's time to stop oh the perennial podcast. Yes. Uh, lastly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Oriental Take Poppies. Lunch. Oriental Poppies. Oriental Me, too. Poppies. Me, too. The Love Beauty of Livermore. Oh, yeah. The big, big giant. The big red one. Short lived. Red. Yeah. Which but is why you got to put a lot in. I'd say the take home on perennials is I love to use them in in areas where we use annual flowers. It fills beds. It gives you a base. It a little bit reduces how much money you spend and how many times you change out the annuals. But I really enjoy kind of shoving them all together. I we plant them like I plant them like we plant our pots. I just shove them in one on top of the other, and whatever wins wins. And man, when they're flowering, it's a stunning look, and it requires very little effort. That's wonderful. I'm liking this. It's been like a 10, maybe 15 year trend, but watching people uh, use perennials in their annual flower mm-hmm. pots a lot more for very That's textures become very and things. Much yeah. a thing. And you don't get that full, huge color show from it, but you get a lot of interesting textures it's that you can't get more in more like a complete meal. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And I think there's something very visually rewarding about it when you're not just like expecting a fireworks display on every single plant in your pot. So much more options with perennials. Yeah. You're anyway. limited on your animals. Perennials. Mix your perennials into your flower Yes, pots, do folks. it. That's my I advice. mean, we did, a, we did a trial of some perennial planters a few years ago, and it had like a salvia, a gallardia, and a, um, yeah. That's a good combo. Coreopsis. 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 And I, it was beautiful. I mean, you know, with, with they were all softer colors, but it Turned out pretty nice, they but it was gorgeous. a late Those summer. Those three are really long-lived blooms, too. So yeah, as yeah. opposed to a lot of perennials, which are, I call them five-minute flowers. They look yeah. great for five minutes, and right. then they're a bush. And that's the, the stuff you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Four this, was a late, this was a late summer offering when they yeah. would finally bloom, and it was way out of our window. So it was, we, yeah. I, I would recommend, if anybody's trying to say, how do I incorporate perennials? A, look at the colors you like and the blooms you like. Then look at the the time you want to enjoy your garden because every perennial has a bloom window. Mm-hmm. So it'll say, you know, mid summer to late summer or early fall or early spring to start of summer or it's a full summer bloomer. It's not going to be the whole season. That's the thing about a perennial, but some of them are rebloomers. So some Salvia. of our mm-hmm. most expensive perennials are rebloomers. And we we mentioned that in our, our catalog and you can change check that out online so if you're trying to get ideas feel free to go to mossgreenhouses.com go to the wholesale link and then go to the catalog and then you can look what we've got on there and then i encourage you to try one new perennial this year whatever that might be and with that i uh, look forward to, uh, congratulations on 50th episode yeah. our next episode is going to be on um frost dates and plant or not to plant i said one last thing yes you may if you want to up your perennial game just Google Bloom Calendar. You will not be disappointed. There you go. Period. Fire. Google it. <laughs> and with that, we invite you to go live life in high. Nope. Definitely. Don't have it. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was so trying. In full color. The telepump oh, is broken live... <laughs> today. 
<laughs> we that was a test and I failed. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, so we invite you to go live life in full color because plain is boring. Something to that effect. <laughs> Thank you Murphy's very much, Law. guys. Yep. <laughs>